Good morning and welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Catholic Church. Our readings this morning are in the uh, Credo, page 947, and we will be singing from the Breaking Bread books. Our gathering hymn is number 178, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 178. Please stand. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter as we welcome the third week of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred Paschal mysteries. You are set to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Give you thanks for your great glory. 
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord.
scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted the, the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way, and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that, is, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The season of Easter is certainly a time of the sacraments. The reception and the celebration of the sacraments and the participation of the sacraments. So very much more than merely observing the sacraments is accentuated during this period, is it not? And just the last Sunday, now that we have had Easter and the sacraments begin, Deacon Dale had the privilege and the opportunity of celebrating a baptism. And we'll have more throughout this season and the rest of the year. It's a time for confirmation, which will be coming up a couple weeks from today at the new cathedral. And our eighth graders and our students from our parish school of religion and Holy Cross Academy will celebrate the reception of the sacrament of confirmation. It's a time for First Holy Communion and our first graders three weeks from today at one o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday at the beginning of May will celebrate the reception of the Blessed Sacrament in this institution in the, in, in the year of the Eucharist. What a special time to be able to do that, the first of many times, their First Holy Communion. It's a time that couples will get married and celebrate the sacraments of vocations such as holy matrimony and we'll have new deacons and new priests and holy orders. And next Sunday, once again, as I do quarterly, I'll offer the sacrament of anointing of the sick, sacraments of healing, and of course, finally, the sacrament of reconciliation continues, and I say continues through Lent. And that's a perfect segue because even though it's a time for sacraments, when I think of one word now as we go through these 50 days of the Easter season, I think of the word continuing. And so it all continues, does it not? And what happens here is that we now have our Sabbath. We know with the Jewish faith that it begins with sundown. Friday going into Saturday. Well, Jesus made our Sabbath Sunday, the day of the Son, the second person, the Son of God, the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. That this is the season the Lord has made. We truly are glad and we rejoice. And we are Easter people and Alleluia truly is our song. So we can't help but to say and especially sing it over and over and over again. 
The season continues. We have our Sabbath. On the first day of the week, he appeared to his mother and Mary Magdalene and Peter and John and so forth. We heard these words from a couple weeks ago. And now during these 50 days, we continue with joy and exultation, what it all means. It just isn't enough to celebrate it for one day. We continue throughout. So I think of that word continuing where our Sabbath was established. And without it, we never have the 51 other Sundays throughout the rest of the year. Sundays in honor of the original Sabbath. It's a time for the Acts of the Apostles. Again, we may ask, well, who's the main central character in the Acts of the Apostles? And we may say, well, St. Peter. Well, that's true, but even more so, the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, Peter would never say what he is saying, where he is saying, when he is saying it. So Peter tells the people about how God has glorified his servant Jesus. Remember during Holy Week, beginning with uh, Palm Sunday, a, a mere few weeks ago? And we listened to what's called the Suffering Servant Songs. And these Suffering Servant Songs of Isaiah, there's four descriptions of one servant. They're written, they're written centuries before Jesus, yet church applies them to Jesus. So when we hear about the Suffering Servant, as we did throughout all of Holy Week, culminating with that service on Good Friday in the evening as we were gathered here, we may ask, whatever happened to that suffering servant? Well, God has glorified his servant Jesus. St. Peter tells us this morning in Acts, that's what's happened to him. He's been glorified because of his suffering. He is the holy and righteous one, and you and I are invited to be holy and righteous as well. He is the author of life, St. Peter says. So if he is the author of life, we should read everything he has to say. God raised him from the dead, and we are his witnesses. We are invited to be witnesses by what we say and do in front of one another. Not that we would, but we should never think, well, I don't need to witness to him or her because I've known her as a parishioner, or I've known him, I've known that family for years. I don't, they already know what it's about. We don't need to witness to one another. We should especially continue to witness to one another. As a matter of fact, hone the craft with those that we feel most comfortable with in our comfort zone, and then go out in evangelization to others. That's one way of extending the new evangelization. St. Peter says the word ignorance. What did Jesus say? Father, forgive them, for they do not know. We pray for wisdom instead of being ignorant. This we know. Again, he says that Christ would suffer, the suffering servants. Our task is to always repent and be converted. And that's the true Easter message. This past Monday at about two o'clock in the afternoon, we had the eclipse. So the moon and the light from the moon and the light from the sun is on our minds. The light from the sun and the moon can't even compare to the ultimate light that comes to us from Christ who is our light. And the Paschal candle reminds us of that. We sang, Lord, let your face shine on us. He is the son of God. The sun rises in the east. He rose on Easter Sunday. Easter words and symbolism. We continue listening to the words from St. John, and he says that Jesus Christ is the righteous one, and you and I should be righteous as well. He, John invites us to keep his commandments, and that way we show that we are righteous. This we know. We fulfill the law out of love by obeying his commandments, not to say I obeyed his commandment and then go ahead and say and do whatever we feel like doing. It all has to fit and tie together. This we know. John says, whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in them. And so we know that. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. How do we do that? Out of love. We may ask, is it still Easter day? We were talking about real time and screen time, and we were talking about Doubting Thomas Sunday and how Easter Sunday is such a long day where a week has passed. Well, now two weeks have passed since Easter Sunday, and we're still on Easter Sunday. This is St. Luke's interpretation of the events, the same gospel we heard last week. It picks up from the Emmaus story in which he appeared to two disciples and they recognized him in the breaking of the bread and their hearts were burning as he explained the scriptures to them. Everything continues. He says, peace be with you. Ghosts and apparitions don't say peace be with you. Only the resurrected body of Jesus does. Our message to one another is to say, peace be with you. If we say, peace be with you, it shows that we love one another. Also, still incredulous for joy and were amazed. 
not just to be filled with joy, but they can't believe what they're seeing or hearing. But blessed are those who can do this without seeing or hearing. The senses certainly help, though. We would react in the same way. He is right there before them. He takes something to eat. He gives us the Eucharist. He opens their minds to understand the scriptures, and he opens our minds as well. That the Son of God would suffer and rise and on the third day and preach repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So as witnesses, as we continue, you and I are invited to preach through the sacramental life of the church so that we will know that as we are witnesses of all these events, that it really is true. We have our Sabbath, we have our Sunday, we have our Easter season. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen. Amen, hallelujah. I believe in one God, the Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten and not made, and consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. He came down to heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, in the heart of the Virgin Mary, he became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated in the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the glory of God's living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of your birth wife. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken with the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer our Paschal prayers and we ask our Lord to respond. For church leaders, May the Lord guide them in caring for the physical and spiritual needs of those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Lord grant them fortitude in defending the dignity and sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are struggling in their faith, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, may the Spirit renew us in the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Al Mangelsdorfer, may they rest in eternal peace with the Father in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Anna and Frank Harrods, for whom this Mass is being offered today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those thoughts we hold deep within the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, our hearts are alive and well as we offer our Paschal Easter prayers for one another, and we ask you generously to respond according to your most holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song during the preparation of the gifts is number 162, Two Were Bound for a Mass, number 162. All their hope for the future had been nailed to 
in the breaking of bread. On the sea of Tiberius, when the night was nearly gone, and their toil seemed so useless, not one fish had they caught from the shore. The stranger called to them, cast your net, friends, once more, and they filled it to bursting, but the net was not torn. And they knew it was Jesus, and they came him to shore, bread and fish for their breakfast from the hands of their Lord. Oh, Peter, if you love me, you must care for my sheep. If you follow your shepherd, then a shepherd you'll be. When the road makes us weary, when our labor seems but loss, when the fire of faith weakens and too high seems the cost, let the church turn to its risen Lord, who for us for the cross, and we'll find our hearts burning at the sound of his voice. And then we'll for Emmaus, in his heart and am lost, all their hope for the future have been nailed to a cross, love unknown back from the dead, and they knew he was risen in the breaking of Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all his holy work. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover <laughs> has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell Rosansky, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Lord, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for many people. <laughs> Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Oh, 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to say the word that I shall be you. Amen. Amen. Our communion song will be number 164, Alleluia, Love is Alive, number 164. Our second communion song is number 326, number 326, The Body of Christ. Thank you. 
we are one in the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. Word become flesh by His grace. Miracle of a mystery, no tongue ever could fully explain. This is the blood of the Lamb, gift of a heart open wide, poured from the cross to the altar where love comforts and fills and provides. Amen, amen. We are healed by the Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in our flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Some announcements. The Knights of Columbus will be meeting this Thursday at 7 p.m. in the gym conference room. If you are interested in being involved with the Knights, please feel free to join them at their meeting. Confessions will not be available this Wednesday evening. Confessions can be heard on Saturday at 3 p.m. until 3.45 p.m. And one last announcement. You may be seeing another deacon here in the upcoming weeks. Um, his name is Deacon Luke Kebby. He and his wife were members down at the, the old cathedral and have decided that they wanted to be in a normal parish. <laughs> so they're going to join us here, and that doesn't mean that I'm going any, anywhere. You can't get rid of me that easily. So there'll be two of us here now. Thank you so much, Deacon Dale. I'm so glad we're normal. <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by their lives. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Say Saint Michael. Michael. Our hymn of sending forth is number 392, the Celtic Alleluia sending forth, number 392.
making him think so much.